Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Handy Mandy and Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. So as you can see, I got this crappy public domain edition of it, which... Take photos. All right, at 11.41 a.m. Got it. I'll remind you today at 11.41 a.m. Cheers, Google. Uh, which doesn't come with a, a blurb. It does have this little intro, so I'm going to read you this little intro, then we'll go through and check out my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, hello there! Another spring, another book, and another old wizard in Oz. Imagine, and with Regido mixed up in the story, there's bound to be fun and excitement. Now, I do hope you like Handy Mandy and Knox. I'm very fond of the Royal Ox myself. He rather reminds me of Kabumpo, while Kerry is as nice a young king as I've met in an Oz age. But tell me what you think. No one, not even Ozma, receives as fine letters as you all write me, and I can hardly wait to hear all this year's news and those interesting Aussie suggestions. My news comes from the Palace of the Red Jinn today. It seems that he and Kabumpo are really going to pay that long promised visit to Randy and Regalia. My, I'll have to look into this. Meanwhile, best and merriest wishes and a high old happy-go-lucky year to you, Ruth Plumley Thompson. Uh, April 1937. And you can see it's really weirdly formatted, so that's like the intro, dedication, start of chapter one. Um, does it even have... Oh, it is? No. I don't even know what that's supposed to be. Anyway, I'm going to go in and check out some tabs. And so Mandy, Handy Mandy, she's a goat girl with a ton of hands. And she ends up like flying through the air on the back of some rock, uh, as you do in the Oz stories. And we get our first pun of the book, or our first one that I tabbed out anyway. After all, sniffed the reckless maiden. Nothing very dreadful has happened yet. I've always wanted to travel, and now I am travelling. Not many people have flown through the air on a rock. Why, it's really a rocket. But um bum tsh. And so here we get a little bit more, I guess a bit of description, where we find when uh, Handy Mandy and the Ox end up, uh, well, it's, we end up with the Handy Mandy, she lands in this kingdom, there's a royal ox there, there's some lore behind that, which I'm not going to go into right now. Um, but yes, we get this, uh, how dare you come into a king's presence armed in this barbarous fashion, gasped the high quick questioner, taking a step towards the goat girl, but too frightened to touch her. Pigs! cried Mandy, suddenly losing her temper. Can I help my seven arms? All of us are Mount Mern of seven arms in hand, and you with your skinny too seem far funnier than I. I am Mandy, the goat girl, as anyone in his senses can see. The girl is right, observed the ox, gazing more attentively at Mandy and now speaking quite calmly. She can no more help those seven arms than you can help those seven warts on your nose, Questo. I tell you this maiden is a real curiosity, and if you three high boys will cease rattling your teeth in your clubs, perhaps she will explain why she has come to Keretaria. I myself shall call her Handy Mandy. So we learn a little bit more about Handy Mandy and why she has all these arms. Um, so the Imperial Persuader says, But she still has not explained all these arms. Who ever heard of a seven-handed maiden? I have, asserted Mandy stoutly. And what, pray, is there to explain? This iron hand, the goat girl raised it slowly and thoughtfully as she spoke. I use for ironing, lifting hot pots from the stove, and all horrid sort of hard work. This leather hand I keep for beating rugs, dusting, sweeping, and so on. This wooden hand I use for churning and digging in the garden. These two red rubber hands for dishwashing and scrubbing. And my two fine white hands I keep for holding and braiding my hair. We get these, this great exchange here. Uh, again, just another pun that I enjoyed. Everything's blue in the Munchkin country of Oz, Knox told us sulkily, as sharp briars and thorns reached out to scratch his satiny hide. Even the royal ox of Keretaria, hinted Handy with a sly wing. Oh, the river's blue and the houses are blue and even the wind blue. Just a great exclamation here from um, uh, Handy Mandy, uh, the, aka the goat girl. So we get, well, I'll be buttered, cried the goat girl, throwing down every one of her weapons. I'll be churned and buttered. <laughs> Another great pun. You can tell from my laugh that I just did. <laughs> it's stupid, but I, I, it made me laugh. Fine, fine, that's the way, cheered the Topsies heartily. You'll be spinning circles before you know it and have beautiful wool like the rest of us. Wool, gasped Handy, who was extremely proud of her shining yellow braids. Oh, I will not. That's just too much. And to begin with, Handy Mandy is not a fan of Ozma. I mean, she hasn't met her, but from what she heard, she doesn't like uh, doesn't like Ozma, the ruler. And uh, she learns about the rules of Oz, which is no magic in Oz. Um, and she reads out, um, practice no magic. Oh, what does she expect us to do with good magic right at hand? Starve? But ho ho, we can get around that old Toggins. After all, we are not practicing magic. We don't have to practice it. Our magic is perfect, so put that in your pipe and smoke it, Miss Ozma to Bosma. And we get um, this great little line of dialogue, which I think is more interesting when you think about 
uh, like uh, the Wizard of Oz and its association with gay culture, uh, you know, how friend of Dorothy was used as a term to mean somebody gay. Um, and I just love this line, are you going to stand there till you are pegged like a top? And presumably like, wouldn't you be pegged like a bottom? Oh yeah, so this was just interesting. There's a nice little bit of uh, description that I want to read to you here. But also, I have no idea what a shoot the shoot is. Um, some kind of slide, I guess. Uh, it also directly addresses the reader, which is one of my pet peeves, but I will, I will forgive it for that. Now you and I, who are used to scenic railways and have enjoyed the thrills of shoot the shoots for years, would have been less startled by the wild dizzy leaps, the swoops, curves and climbs, and the sickening drops of the Silver King's chariot. But neither the Goat Girl nor the Royal Ox had ever heard of a scenic railway, much less ridden in one, and the underground car of the Silver Monarch was more like a shoot the shoots than anything else. Sometimes the two travellers are in complete darkness, at other times they're whirled by the narrow, well-lighted ledges of a queer cave city, where the subjects of the Mountain King lived in cell-like apertures in the Silver Rock, like the cliff dwellers of old. Then, without warning, the car would plunge to the work caverns below, past the gloomy shafts of the silver mines, or dart up to the living quarters and grottos of the king himself. Caves so lavishly furnished and glowing with jewels, handy let out little shrieks of astonishment. In the king's subterranean gardens, silver swallows bathed in the silver fountains. Silver maples rustled their lacy branches in the lavender-scented breezes. Silver petaled flowers with jeweled scents grew as riotously as daisies and buttercups in the upstairs world. So sometimes it can be beautiful. So we get some great exclamations here, which I'm just going to share with you. A robbery takes place and we get, Prunes and peppermints, ejaculated the scarecrow. You know how much I love a good ejaculation. And then Dorothy goes, Peanuts and pretzels. Uh, and then Jellia goes, Oh, that beggar, all oh, that pilgrim, that old bunk, or whatever he was. So we get this with Glinda, the good witch. Um, she goes, The boy is right, declared Glinda, crossing slowly to a green sofa. I can see by her face and hands, Glinda smiled faintly, that this girl is both honest and industrious. And that to me just put me in mind of, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but that scientific study of uh, the, the body and the face and hands and how you can tell whether someone's a criminal based on what their nose looks like and all of that stuff, which is a load of old bollocks. Um, but that would have been popular at around about the time that Plumley Thompson was writing, so I wonder if that's inspired by that. We get a great line from Handy. Uh, she just goes, for goatness' sake, be careful. And then the final thing I want to point out here is uh, that the Scarecrow nicknames her... Um, in, he, well, we get Handy Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the straw man had nicknamed her, because she had a hand for every day in the week. So that's why she's called Handy Mandy. So I enjoyed that final pun, because that was literally in the last couple of paragraphs. But yes, overall, Handy Mandy and Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. Uh, one of the better later Oz books, at least for me, I gave it probably a strong 3.5 out of 5. I don't think I can give it any more than that. Um, I don't know whether it was helped by the fact that I read it all in one sitting as well. I think that probably had quite a lot to do with it. But yes, I very much enjoyed it. Would recommend if you've uh, read this far, keep on reading. And uh, yeah, Handy, Handy Mandy and Oz. So there we have it. That's what I made of Handy Mandy and Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.